What's up everyone, welcome back to Switchcraft, and today I'm going to go through for everybody all of the games that I beat in 2017. Now, I know that I might be a little bit late to the party here, but I figured that it would be great to keep a record of all the games that I beat, and then every year, let everybody know all the games that I've been able to clear over the last 12 months. So, as some of you may or may not know, uh, 2017 was really the year that I got back into gaming, after quite a bit of time off. And it was really the Nintendo Switch that got me back into it. It was actually the reason why I started this channel. Now, what I also did at the same time was the, the Switch got me back into playing the Nintendo 3DS as well. So I'm going to go through uh, all of the uh, Nintendo Switch and Nintendo 3DS games that I was able to beat in 2017. So we're going to start with the Nintendo 3DS games because meh, maybe they're not quite as exciting as some of the Switch games. And uh, uh, probably most of them, most of you have and have already beaten them. But we're going to start off with a classic, uh, Super Mario 3D Land. This was like 3D World, the version of that for the uh, 3DS. And this was a great game. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite uh, 3D platformers on the 3DS because it really made use, amazing use of all of the 3D technology. It was super sharp. The controls were on point and I loved it. Uh, I was also... For the first time, I know, don't don't judge me, but I was also able to beat Luigi's Mansion. Now, this wasn't something I cleared because you got to get like all kinds of all kinds of ghosts and all kinds of uh, gems in every single level. I didn't get all of them, but I got most of them, and I was able to to beat the final boss. And this was an amazing game. Um, I want to get it for the GameCube, and I'd also love to see it re-released, remastered, done again. Luigi's Mansion two or three or whatever it is for the Nintendo Switch. I'd pick that up in a second. Then we got The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. I think that this was actually that I got into this game or I wanted it once I played Breath of the Wild and I realized how amazing the Zelda universe was and I just wanted more. So I picked up Link Between Worlds and uh, I am not sorry that I did. I had a ton of fun killing this game. We also were able to do uh, again, now this is, you may not have judged me for uh, Luigi's Mansion, so please don't judge me for this one, because this is a game that I never had on the N64, never played on the N64, so obviously never beat it on the N64, and it is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I was a huge Ocarina of Time uh, uh, fan, and I just never got around to this game. There's something about the, the, the time uh, constraints of the game that just didn't excite me. And boy, was I missing out. I played this for the 3DS, killed it, and I had a ton of fun. Meant to be. Um, I was also able to beat uh, Pokemon X. Um, this was really... I, I played Red and Blue back in the day. and I played the crap out of that. That was actually the, one of the first Game Boy games that I ever got. Um, I played the crap out of Gold and Silver. I still have physical copies of those. Um, and then I played Pokemon Black. And this was really the next Pokemon game. Um, I'm currently working through Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon to get ready for Pokemon Switch later this year, hopefully. But uh, Pokemon X was, I think, uh, a little more back to the roots of Pokemon, a little bit closer to Gold and Silver, and a little bit further away, a little bit more flushed out, a little bit cleaner and uh, better gameplay overall, mechanics, experience, everything than Pokemon Black. I must say I enjoyed this game much more than Pokemon Black for the Nintendo DS. And the last one, um, I got so hyped after E3 of 2017, uh, and, and particularly those couple of seconds for Metroid Prime 4, uh, that when this game came out, I pre-ordered it. Uh, I, had, I had a great time uh, playing it, and it is Metroid Samus Returns for the Nintendo 3DS. Cleared this game, 100%ed it. Uh, I didn't. I didn't do it in like particularly good of a time. I think. I think I finished the thing in like eight or, or nine hours on my second playthrough. So I didn't maximize it or anything. I didn't speed run it by any means. But uh, what an amazing 2D platformer! And going back and playing the original Metroid and playing um, Super Metroid, I can see where the inspiration for this game came from. And they did a pretty damn good job. This is really. I'd say one of the hardware pushers for the Nintendo 3DS. All right, now that we got the Nintendo 3DS games out of the way, uh, I'm going to go through the games that well, really got me back into gaming and inspired me to do this for all of you guys and be a YouTuber. And they are the games for the Nintendo Switch, the system that, that got me back into uh, nostalgia, 
reliving my childhood and just reminding me of how great and amazing and fun video games can be. And, uh, you know, no list would be complete if you didn't have something like, I mean, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, I, I don't know what I can say about this game that hasn't already been said. I don't know what, um, what I don't even have words to describe how, how, how meaningful this game was to me how many hours, hundreds of hours I poured into it and continue to pour into it. Uh, replayability is just through the roof. I cannot say enough good things about this game. And a, a, a review for this game after 220 hours into it was actually the, the first video that I ever uploaded to YouTube. Um, and, you know, looking back on it, listening to my narration, um, you know, it wasn't my best work, but uh, I've tried to get better every YouTube video. And this is the reason why I'm doing this. So, Zelda Breath of the Wild. I actually have the uh, Master Edition Breath of the Wild. Maybe that'll be the subject of a future Rare and Retro unboxing. I don't know. Next, we have ARMS. So, ARMS. ARMS was a game that, uh, I mean, would I buy it again? Would I buy it now? Meh. I've never really been into the, uh, into the fighting games. Um, so... Don't, don't hate me for that, but I've never really been into the fighting games. I got this game because, well, to be quite honest with you, um, there, there wasn't really anything out, out else for the Switch at this time. So, ARMS it was, had a blast, beat the single player all kinds. Uh, I beat it with every single person, not so much free time I had because there weren't any other Switch games out at the time, except for like Disgaea 5, the complete uh, Disgaea. Um, I have that, I haven't beaten it, that thing is like endless. But uh, ARMS was one of those games that I got that uh, was, like I said, pretty much because there wasn't anything out for the Switch. And I don't know if, I got it, if I'd get it again. I got these cool ARM sleeves, um, which is like, uh, uh, I would not be seen in public with those. But ARMS was another game that I beat in 2017. Then we have Splatoon 2, the uh, Japanese phenomenon game that is continuing to sell um, and continues to get updates, maps, weapons... Um, Salmon Run, um, you have, um, I, this is actually one of the first games that I streamed, um, and Splatfest, I've been a part of every single Splatfest, and, and this is a game that, um, again, can you ever really beat it totally? I don't know, but there is a single player mode, and I cleared that, so if you beat every level with every weapon, you uh, essentially kill the single player mode. Splatoon 2 must have. The next game was again um this is kind of like arms this goes in the arms category of games that i bought because i was addicted to the switch and there wasn't really anything else out there and it is fate extella the umbral star so this is a uh, hack and slash uh japanese anime game uh would i recommend it i mean there are some scantily clad characters um and yeah it, it really gives you a taste of uh hardcore japanese anime so if that's your thing, you'd love it. If not, maybe wait for some of these other games. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I had so much fun when this with this strategic RPG when it came out. Um, I was playing it on the on the on the train to and from work. Uh, it was playing this game actually more than any other, where people saw me in public playing my Switch and came up to me and asked me like, "Wow, what is that? Is the Switch worth it? Is it fun? Is it as fun as it looks?" And I say yes. It's an absolute time vampire, and I would absolutely recommend this game. Now, I still, I, I, I might have to actually do this game again for 2018 when the DLC comes out, because I'm going to grab that up and uh, keep playing it. This definitely has replayability, but one of my favorite games that I beat in 2017. Next, we have probably one of the best stories and when I'm for for games on the Switch, and when I say that, I don't mean necessarily in-game stories. I mean the in-game story here is pretty good. This is like a 2D uh, platformer, kind of like the Metroidvania type of game. Uh, Axiom Verge for the Nintendo Switch. I beat this in 2017. Um, I plowed through this thing because the the gameplay, the the graphics, and and especially the soundtrack were just out of this world. If you like Metroid, if you like uh, Super Metroid, if you like Castlevania, uh, this is an amazing game. And the backstory behind this game is, um, you know what, it's it's so good that it's actually worth a video of its own. 
So I'm not going to say any more about it, but you have to check it out, particularly if you can get a, if you can still can get a hold of it, the um, the multiverse edition of Axiom Verge. All right. Now down to the last two games. Um, I'm going to do these in reverse order of the way that I had the stack. The second last game that I beat in 2017 was Doom. Um, again, this is kind of like uh, Splatoon 2. Can you really ever beat Doom? Um, I guess not with the multiplayer, but I definitely uh, smashed the uh, single player. That thing's cleared 100% highest difficulty mode. I had a great time with this, and it blows my mind to this day that you had an experience like, like Doom to take with you anywhere. And that's, I really think, one of the biggest draws uh, for the Nintendo Switch, that you can take a game like Doom anywhere with you. Absolutely amazing. And then the last game was, I think, my Zelda was definitely my game of the year for 2017. But if that was 1A, this is definitely 1B. Um, and it is Super Mario Odyssey. Um, again, this is kind of this kind of falls into the same camp as, as Breath of the Wild. What can I say about this game that hasn't already been said? Um, it, it with before playing this, you you hope it lives up to. Uh, games like Super Mario 64 and and Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy and then going back and playing those games after playing this man like I wish I I wish I had Cappy in those games it'd be so much more fun um, but Super Mario Odyssey was the last of my stacks of games that I beat in 2017 the year that I got back into gaming the year that I started YouTubing and the the year that I kind of remembered what it's like to be a kid so there's my games that I beat for 2017. Uh, I'm going to be doing this every year and uh, hope to see you on the next one for the games that I beat in 2018. Thank you all for watching. Switchcraft out.